Hey folks, dude here, coming at you on Thursday, 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 June 19th. And kind of one of those little hobby things that I kind of really just have started doing, or I've started redoing, and okay, I've always done. I've, I literally have always done this. I will go out and I'll find a basket case, or I'll find just a used knife, and I'll tweak it, tune it, and bring it back to its former south, and, you know, return it back to usability. Uh, case in point was the you know this knife. I mean, I just recently pulled out of my pile of stuff, and um, I really cannot do it justice to show you guys just how okay it is now. Before the edge was all bent, and there's a couple techniques you guys can use to get these things back to service. And you can look at this thing, and you can see it is basically straight. I still need to work on the point a little bit. Anytime you're seeing silver on the edge, that is not sharp enough. And uh, well. Case in point, it's it's easy to fix. I mean, you basically have a sharpening stone, a couple passes, and that's really all it takes to get it back to usability is when you do it right, that silver spot will disappear. There's another couple tricks that you can do. The biggest thing you have to remember, and this is, this is all a practiced art form, where you do it long enough, you can keep angles, because I mean, I know literally it's like, you know, kind of patting your head, tapping your stomach type of thing where you try to do three things at once. But literally the easiest way to do this is you take your knife, you have your sharpening stone, place the knife on there flat, raise it up to your 15, 20, 30 degrees, whatever your choice of level is. I usually tend to go about 20 degrees or so, maybe 30 degrees. I tend to like a little bit more of an obtuse angle. And the other thing too is also you can do this, you can progressively roll and you get that instead of... The, the 45 degree, you know, or 30 degree or whatever cantled edge, you have a rolled edge, which looks more like the front of a boat hull or like the bow of a boat. The bow is classically what you're going to find in like your Japanese swords, where it's not a true sharp edge, but it's kind of more of a round to an uh, actual point to another edge that rounds off. So it literally comes in and rounds off, goes to a point. That edge is a reinforced edge. It is very very hard to do by hand. Usually most time people do that, they'll do it with something called a slack belt. So literally you're sharpening something and you have a piece of sanding belt and when you push down, it bows in the middle. When you're pushing down, you're going to get that perfect curvature and a sharp point at the edge. Now try to do that by hand, you're kind of doing an angle, another angle, another angle, another angle, and you're kind of playing with it and figuring out for, you know, for all it's worth how to make it happen. Now, for me personally, what I'll do is I will first off eyeball the knife, okay? I'll look literally down its edge and I'll say, okay, this is okay, this is okay, this is okay. Point is bent. And the thing that's really nice about these Swiss Army knives, uh, they're very forgiving in terms of doing defects. And the guy obviously stuck it on there and is doing some wedging and some prying. You don't need to do that. That's why they put the screwdrivers on these guys, okay? You don't need to use the knife blade as a screwdriver. Don't do that to your knife, okay? It's not built to do that. It's it's too sharp an edge. It's too thin a piece of metal. You're going to break it out. You're going to bust it up. It's not made to do that. So anyway, I literally took a pair of needle nose pliers, and I literally flexed it, flexed it, flexed it, and worked it gently. I could have put it on an anvil and banged it down flat. I decided to try, you know, charitably, the nicest, easiest method first. And that's always what you're going to do whenever you're working on anything. You go with the lightest method first first to see if you're getting any response. If it's responding to your inputs, you're now going and doing what you need to do. Don't grab the five pound hammer for a half pound job. You're just going to bust stuff up and break things. So literally what I did was I worked this edge. It, it, it's still not exactly perfect, okay? I mean, if I get this thing to kind of do a little bit of a reflection thing there, you see a little bit of a defect, like right around about, um, uh, like right around about like this zone here, there's a little bit of a a little bit of a, you know, you can kind of see a little bit of a defect. Let me try to get the light just right. It's like a little bit of a defect, like right in this zone. Well, literally that thing was like wavy as all get out because the dude had actually put it in there and, you know, bent it, buggered it up and what have you. So I took a pair of you nose pliers, basically got it straight. And then I started working it and working it and working it. So then I grabbed my modified, uh, literally the stone was centered up in this. I moved it over and cut finger grooves, you know, so I literally cannot cut myself while sharpening this thing. And, of course, find my, you know, preferred angle of sharpening. Now, once you get to the point where you can actually take a knife and you're pretending you're slicing the top layer off, you're making progress, okay? Try to do it both ways is an acquired art form. You have to learn how to do this first to get repeatable results. 
always want to do one stroke on one side, one stroke on the other side. Then what you do is you follow it up. And usually what I'll do is I'll follow it up. This is a 1200 DMT diamond stone. So a couple passes, knock it off, a couple passes, knock it off. You can do this thing all day long, and it's going to take forever to wear off the same amount of metal that a 600 grit will do or an 800 grit will do. But I like diamond stones. I mean, usually I try to use them wet. Uh, case in point, you don't really want to hog into it too much because what this is, is this is a matrix of stainless steel. It has nickel on board. The nickel is actually what holds the diamond grit. If you're hogging into it real hard, you are removing, dislodging, and scraping the diamonds out of its substrate. The little holes are actually giving some place for the metal that's been ground off some place to go to. So literally a couple of passes, see how your progress is. Now I use the preferred method of arm. That's how I check my knives. That's just me. Now, if you see me walking around with a bunch of bear patches, that's why. Once you have a knife that is shaving sharp, and I go like right to the very edge of shaving sharp, like I actually need to take a stroke to make it cut correctly as I'm drawing down, that is fine. If you go for a true razor edge on a pocket knife, it's going to be too thin, you're going to bend it over, it's going to wear out too fast, and it's not going to last. Now, this thing, when I picked it up, was of course buggered, banged up, dull as hell, still got a little bit of a tarnish about halfway down there, you know, Still has a little bit of a spot on the blade. Hopefully you guys can kind of see that. Like right on the edge, there's a little bit of a spot there. But I, I can see apparently the camera's not picking it up. But the thing is, when you get practiced up in the art of sharpening these things, pretty soon you can tell, not even having to use the old fingernail trick where you basically draw it down. And the classic trick is you draw it across your fingernail. If you feel resistance, like it starts pulling at one point or another on the blade, that spot is still not sharp enough. Go back and touch up that part of the blade. I'm going to bring up on this one, folks. I wouldn't make this video too terribly long, but you know what? Practicing and getting good at hand sharpening a knife is a skill that will follow you for all of your life. Just like riding a bicycle. You know, pick up a stone, pick up a knife, and go to town. I've been doing this for freaking ever, okay? I literally can almost do this stuff in my sleep. But you saw the results. This thing was just about as sharp as a butter knife when I started about 20 minutes ago, if at, if at that point. A couple passes, a little bit of TLC, your knife will cut like a... Well, a samurai sword. Well, maybe not, but it'll, it'll cut, okay? It'll cut. <laughs> I'm going to work on this one, folks. Eat good, keep the sun ring as always, always. You know it, you love it. Mmm, sharp knife goodness. See you guys. Both. Earners.